Hey guys, Simply Betta here. I'm Taylor, and I'm about to show you a very quick tour of my very tiny fish room. Tiny. My fish room is a bathroom. Literally. It's actually a bathroom. It's a spare bathroom in our house. Nobody was using it. It was just a bunch of wasted space. I decided, hey, I'm going to make this my little hobby room. So let me give you a little 360 tour. Uh, behind me right here to you know, this side. Um, this is where the shower was in the bathtub. You can see the bathtub down there. And then the shelving is built on top of it using the steel bathtub as a support. And then back here is just a wall and a little cheapy shelf that I made. And back here is where the toilet is, was. Okay, and then we have the, you know, the counter and sink and stuff for my storage. And then nothing and nothing at my door. And it starts all over again. Here's the bathtub I was talking about. It has four shelves on it. The bottom shelf has some tanks. Middle shelf is holding a bunch of bettas at the moment. And then upper shelf, just one tank. And then storage on the very tippy top. This shelf right here is one that I made a while ago. It's, it's just, it's a PVC shelf with PVC and like one by eights. And then I painted the PVC so it didn't look white. Why? Because I wanted a shelf. It was super cheap. Um, it's a little wobbly, but it does the job. I don't plan on keeping it forever, but it does the job for now. It houses more bettas. These are one gallon jars from a plastic distributor. I learned about these plastic containers from Gian, actually from Inglorious Bettas. She pointed out that's what she uses. They're gallon sized plastic and I decided to give them a shot, and they're awesome. I really do like them. They're nice. Down there, I have one of my betta spawns, and Bubby. That's my Bubby. Hey, get back here. And now we're over to this interesting little unit. This little nook here is where the toilet was in my this spare bathroom of mine. Um, it's down there. I built a shelf over it so you don't actually see the toilet. Instead I have those two bed spawn tanks and then two more spawn tanks and then up there it's a storage area but I have black soldier fly container growing up there at the moment. It's an experiment of mine that I'm doing. I actually have a video on it. I'm trying to cultivate my own black soldier fly larva for another one of my pets. Then we move over to my counter area. It's just a bathroom counter. My sink isn't that great. It has a dog bowl in it at the moment. There's me. I have a bunch of female bed is cupped there right now. I did a big spring cleaning today. I cleaned and sterilized everybody's jars and these females still have to go back into their main jars. These are just my, my kind of my small little holding containers for when I clean the big containers. There's solo, 16 ounce solo cups, really. These guys haven't gone back into their containers because I'm actually planning on doing a little experiment with them. Um, I'm thinking about trying to do a better sorority. In this selection, a females are kind of my most calm, at least I think so. Calm ones that I think would probably do best. And I still haven't quite decided what I'm, if I'm going to do it. Um, but that might be a future video. I think I'm going to try to figure that out tomorrow. These are marble female placots. Um, I, you could call them koi. You could call them koi placots, except for her. She's a koi. Uh, Light-bodied Cambodian. More koi. Just a little selection of my, my collection. Very beautiful fish. I love her especially. So I kept these guys together because I'm trying to see if any of them are way more aggressive than the others. Like I, I took some out of the selection because they were really trying to get their neighbors. But these guys really aren't reacting aggressively and they're seeing each other. They haven't been carded in a long time. I think they're getting used to each other. And that's the goal. I'm going to try a, a better sorority in a pretty small sized tank like 10 gallon tank. I'm trying to see how many fish I could put in there, how peaceful they're going to be, how that's going to work. 
We'll just see. That's my brine shrimp. My brine shrimp hatchery. It's a little ghetto. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to make another one too. But my fry are eating a lot. Aha! This is the source of my heat. All of my heat. Um, this little 400 watt heater, I usually have it up here on the counter, keeps the entire room at about 82 degrees. It's really nice. The benefits of having a small space, huh? Hello, Bubbles. Hello. You're a good dog. Okay, let's take a closer look at this bottom bathtub shelf. Okay, currently it only has two tanks on it. I plan on putting more. Um, without heaters, these tanks run at about 70 to 72 to 76 depending if it has a light on it. This planted tank, it's algae ridden. I haven't taken really good care of it for a long time. It just has little platies in it, coral platies, and one female sword tail. I'll probably end up taking them out and putting them into the community tank and then using this one as a grow out or maybe um, trying my beta sorority in here. I've done beta sororities in the past but I've never tried them in a small sized, smaller sized tank. I'm going to give it a shot. Let's see, for plants I have a bunch of Bacopa, I have a few Ludwigia, um, a bunch of that Hydrocodal SP Japan, some Anubius Nana Petite, no, Anubius Nana, um, some Crypt Wenti Red, I believe that is. This one's called Anacris, I believe. This right here, that is Crypt Parva. Nice and small. It does okay. I'm trying to balance the tank out so I don't have that much algae anymore. Okay, I just have DIY CO2 running on this at the moment. Um, this tank right here is my California Blackworm Culture. It might be kind of hard to see. It's not really that bright. Uh, let me get a light on it real fast. Ooh. Actually, I'm just going to take this light temporarily. Sorry, plants. Put it right there. Ooh! Okay, here are my California blackworm culture. Um, I keep them in here with a sponge filter, which for some reason isn't on. It's my fault. I was fiddling around with it here a few minutes ago. There, now it's on. Um. Yeah, so I feed these guys a high-protein pellet. They have some moss back there, too, and I feed them bits and bobs, and I have snails in here, too. Um, they're pretty cool. My fish really like them, and I pr I'm pretty sure the population is slowly growing. My fish love these things. Okay, shelf number two. This is where I keep a bunch of my jarred bettas. Um, they're just little quart sized jars, and then I also have half gallon sizes. I have a lot of fish at the moment. I'm planning on downsizing. In fact, these guys over here are for sure. I'm going to bring them to my local pet store, and then I'm probably going to select maybe six others out of my collection. Of, I have half moon, half moons, I have placots. I have a pretty good selection of all of my favorite types of fish. Like, for example, this is a super red female that I just love so much. No iridescence. She is a nice little fish. Um, I have some white females, platinum white females, growing out over here. Five of them I have. Oh, gosh, a selection. I'll probably go over them a little more closely in a different video. Uh, on my excellent uh, BBC rack over here with the jars that Inglorious Bettas told me about that I really like. I have some of my favorites. Beautiful white male. He's pretty young. I hope he turns out to be half moon. I can't, I don't, can't tell yet. He's one of my favorite males at the moment. A cool black fish with this white butterfly pattern on his fins. But he's just, he's my favorite. He's striking. And this is his spawn over here. I, I um, bred him with a super black female that also carried butterfly. So I'm hoping s some of those traits came over. Oh, this guy right here, I totally have him just for the novelty. Let's see if I can focus. 
but he's a spade tail, and I've never had a spade tail before. And if I could, do you see the little point he has on his fins? If I could get him to flare. He's not a perfect spade tail, but he has the trait, and I just thought he was kind of neat, and I needed him. Like a cool looking, well developed spade tail is really neat. Why don't more people have spade tails? This is where I keep my giants. I have a giant copper male. He is a big boy. He's really great. Um, and then I have a blue, metallic blue male. And then a blue female to go with him. And then a, a pretty white, whoops, sorry, pretty white female. And then I also have this fish right here. She's a giant female, a placot. And man, she, her sister was my favorite fish I've ever had uh, with absolutely amazing fins. Holy cow, the form on this beautiful, beautiful fish was amazing. A little masculine, but still fantastic. I would have loved to breed her, but unfortunately I lost her. And so I will have to breed her sister, just hoping that that genotype carries on. Hey, beautiful. I really love this guy. I really like this guy a lot. Um, you see that clear band he has? Um, it's almost like a reverse butterfly. I really like him a lot. And his spawn is right here. And I hope that trait carries on. These are, they look pretty small, but these are half gallon containers. And I keep some of my males down here. Some of these are going to the local pet store. This guy has a big tumor, unfortunately. So I'm just taking good care of him. That green male back there, the pocot, um, this is his spawn. I, he has a short body, so I bred him to kind of a longer bodied gold colored female. So we'll see how his fry turn out. I only have about 11 fry in here because I got a little fungus attack. But we'll see how they turn out. Pretty coy cool male back there. I need to card these guys. I like to keep them carded. But I just got done with my spring cleaning. Third shelf! All that's on here is a 10 gallon tank with a bunch of uh, stem plants in it. It's kind of like my holding tank for now for these plants. It's just temporary. Um, well, what I've been doing actually is I take my light, my Phoenix Planted Plus light, at night and I put it up here. And then, so these plants are on like a reverse cycle. And then what I do is I, I've been just blocking off like this so the whole room isn't light at night. And that's my setup temporarily just as I hold these plants because I have some plans for them in the future. I just took the papers off so I can show you guys. Let me put the light on there. Okay, I'm a tiny little person, so I rely on a step stool to get to these higher places. Okay, here it is, my uh, my stem plant holding tank. And it's, it's kind of algae central. Shelf number four just has storage on it. Okay, now we're going to the, the toilet shelf over here. If I crouch down, you can see the toilet. And I built the shelf over it. Because nobody's using that now. I have two betta spawns down here. Um, this is a, a dark bodied red half moon spawn. I have a lot of babies in there. They're growing fast. This is the spawn I mentioned between a green, or I guess he could be, be called turquoise, Turquoise male with not so perfect form, but I bred him to a gold female who's pretty ni nice. And there's only about 11 babies in there, which is good. I thought there were a lot less. Moving up to the next shelf, I mentioned these guys. There's a whole lot of babies. This is the black butterfly spawn. I can't wait to see how these babies turn out. And then over here, I have the, what do you call it, reverse butterfly, maybe? Light-bodied Cambodian type. That was this guy right here. Those are his babies. He was a good daddy. 
Hey, hey man. And then this male right here, the butterfly, or another butterfly type, but he doesn't have that reverse pattern. Um, these are his babies. Oh, thanks, Bubbles. Thank you. And this spawn down here. That's his. Okay, top shelf of the toilet nook. That's where I keep my vinegar eels and my microworms. Some live foods. And this is my black soldier fly rearing area. Like I said, I have a video on it if anyone is interested. And a lot of the flies are reaching the end of their life cycle, but I am getting a ton of eggs, which is great. It's going fantastic. I have a light up there. Yeah, it rocks. I don't know where I'd be in life without step stools. This currently is a big bare wall that I can play with at a later date. Um, same with that. Nothing on it. So yeah, this is my little fish room. Tiny. But I'm trying to keep it as efficient, like space efficient as possible. It's still pretty new. I haven't had this for very long at all. So it's in development. Like I have a lot of cords everywhere. I don't have tanks where I want them to be. Future plans are to drill some holes in the back of my shelf that I can put my extension cords through and my arrow lines through so they, they're not dangling out here in front. I don't like that. Also, future plans, I want to put my, uh, my spawning tanks up on this shelf facing the, the long way um, because this shelf stays, it will, the water would stay at like a pretty steady 82 degrees. I wouldn't even need the heaters. And then I'll get some more stuff down here. Raise these babies up, choose the best ones for myself and for anybody, like other hobbyists who want to breed them. And also supply my local fish store with some really nice ones. That was my tiny, tiny fish room tour. And I still have a lot that I want to do in here. Like I said, it's still a pretty new room for me. Um, it's not quite where I want it yet. It's not as jam-packed as I want it yet. But it's coming along pretty nicely. I love it. This is like my favorite place in the whole world. At least in my whole house. For size reference, this is me. And this is everything. Very cramped in here. You have to be very tiny. Bubbles is a good dog. Thank you, Bubbles. You were a good host. Making this video reminded me that I have like an unboxing video or two that I haven't posted or done anything with. So maybe I'll post those. They were pretty neat. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.